Hey kids, it's Mrs. Compton. We're going to get ready to do the, your third grade chapter three review. And remember, we're not going to do every single question. We're going to do the ones that might be a little tricky or maybe even take some extra drawings. So we're going to start here on page 131 with question number one. And it says there are three boats on the lake. So stop to imagine three boats on a lake. And then six people ride in each boat. So imagine six people in each boat. How many people ride in the boats? Draw equal groups to model the problem and explain how to solve it. So the most important thing is that you have the picture in your mind and you know what each of the things represents. So I think I'm going to draw three equal groups and those are going to represent my boats. So these down here will be my three boats. See, one, two, three, and I have three boats on the lake. And then how many people ride in each boat? And the answer to that is six, right? So we have to show six people in each boat. So I have six people in each boat there. And then it says draw equal groups. Okay, we did that to model the problem and explain how to solve it. So first we have to figure out how many people there are all together. So maybe you know how to count by sixes. So maybe you did six, 12, 18. Or maybe you even knew how to count by fives. So there's a group of five. Here's another group of five. And here's another group of five. And maybe you did five, 10, 15, and then added the, these three at the end. 15, 16, 17, 18. Maybe you did that. Either way, we have the number 18 as our answer. Um, but we're not done yet because it does say we have to explain how we solved it. So unless we explain it, we won't get all the points. So let's see here. Maybe you would say something like, I drew three groups of six. Then I skip counted by sixes. Okay, so make sure you explain it as well. All right, next up is number two. We've got Nadia has four sheets of stickers. Okay, so make sure you're stopping to imagine four sheets of stickers. There are eight stickers on each sheet. Okay, can you see them there in your mind? She wrote this number sentence to represent the total number of stickers. Four times eight equals 32. Okay, sounds good to me. So now we have to do the second part here with imagining what is a related number sentence that also represents the total number of stickers she has. Okay, so we know she has four sheets of stickers and eight stickers per sheet. So is that the same as eight plus four? Hmm, I don't think so. So that one is going to get eliminated. Nope. Is that the same as four plus four plus four plus four? Well, four times eight is the same as four plus 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 four. Plus four. Whew. So this is the same as four times four right here. So that can't be it. And four times eight is not the same as eight times eight. So it can't be that one. So it has to be this one. Eight times four is the same as four times eight. And you guys probably remember the commutative property. That's when you just kind of move the numbers around in a multiplication um, equation or in an addition equation, and you get the same answer. All right, so we're on to the next one. Number three, here we are with Lindsay. Lindsay went hiking for two days in Yellowstone National Park. The first jump on the number line shows how many birds she saw the first day. Okay, so that would be this part right here. This would be like day one. And let's see what it says next. She saw the same number of birds on the second day. So this would be like day two right here. Write the multiplication sentence that is shown on the number line. All right, well, let's see. How many hops do we have? This is day one and day two. And we have two hops. And each hop is worth... Eight. We can see the first one's worth eight. And we should double check to make sure the second one's worth eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we have two groups of 
8. So you can actually see the two groups of 8, and that makes 16. Nice job. All right, and then guess what? We don't even have to do any explaining or anything more. So we're just analyzing that number line. It's kind of like in uh, the earlier years when we used number lines to hop, but we were only hopping by ones and maybe even twos sometimes. Now we're hopping by greater numbers. All right, here's number five. We've got Alondra makes four necklaces. Okay, so stop to imagine that. She's got four necklaces. Okay, now imagine that she uses five beads on each necklace. Okay, so now we have to figure this part out for numbers 5A through 5D. Choose yes or no to tell in the, to tell in the number sentence. Oops, I think it should be to tell if the number sentence could be used to find the number of beads a laundry uses. Okay, so just let's go back and make sure. Four necklaces. Five beads on each necklace. Okay, so four necklaces, five on each. So that would be the same as four groups of five, right? So when I go back down here and I read 5a, this says four groups of five or four times five. So that one definitely can be used. So we'll go for a yes here. And let's see. We have one, two, three, four groups of four, and we know we need four groups of five, so this one's a no. Can't use that one. Okay, so now how about this one? Five plus five plus five plus five. Well, this is one, two, three, four groups of five. So this is four groups of five, and really she's doing four groups of five. So that's the exact same as this. One, two, three, four. Four groups of five. So that's a yes. It's a little tricky one for me. Okay, and then we have five plus four. Well, we know each one is going to have five beads on a necklace, so that's not going to work out. So this one would be a no-go. Okay, so next up we've got number six, and we're on page 132. Number six says, John sold three baskets of apples at the market. Each basket contained nine apples. How many apples did John sell? Make a bar model to solve the problem. Well, you know I love my bar models. I love modeling with mathematics. So when I'm going down here, I'm actually thinking about what it said up here. So John sold three baskets of apples at the market. Each basket contained nine apples. So now I'm gonna split my bar model into the baskets, number of baskets. That's gonna show me my groups. So the number of baskets um, is also my number of groups. I just like to make notes sometimes, so I'm like, all right, I can remember what I'm doing here. So those are my groups. So I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna make three groups because that represents three baskets. There we go. All right, now each basket has nine apples. Okay, so I'm gonna put a nine here, and here, and here. All right, so then I have to figure out how many apples did John sell? Well, I don't know about you, but nines were challenging for me until I figured out that they're very close to tens. So I could, in my mind, just add like a little plus one and count by tens for each one and then take them off at the end. It's kind of like my go-to strategy. I love it for nines. It makes it easier in my head. So then what I do is I go 10, 20, 30. But then I added these extra ones. So I know it's going to be 30 minus one, two, three extras. So I know 30 minus three is 27. Now you might have done something like that too, or maybe you even thought, okay, well I can actually count by nine. So you said nine, 18, 27. Either way, it's 27 apples. All right, so we know that John sold 27 apples. All right, here's number nine. 
We're on page 133 right now, right here. Sonia needs three equal lengths of wire to make three bracelets. Okay, so she needs three equal lengths of wire to make three bracelets. The jump on the number line shows the length of one wire in inches. Okay, so this is just one wire. Okay. Now, it says how many inches of wire will Sonia need to make the three bracelets? Well, I guess this is kind of like one bracelet, huh? So I think I'm actually going to type that. One, oops, oh, bracelet. <laughs> oh my goodness. You guys, sometimes things just go a little nuts. Okay, so this is like one bracelet in here. So if we wanted to do a second bracelet, we'd have to hop to the 12. So that's another bracelet. And then she wants to make three bracelets. So we need to hop again because that's our bracelets, right? So now I have three bracelets. One, two, three. And she has three equal lengths of wire to make three bracelets. So where did we end, you guys? Let's see. Check it out. We ended at the 18. So it looks like um, we just did three groups of six. Three groups of six makes 18. So the answer here would be 18, oops, 18 inches. Looks right to me. All right, on to the next. I think we're heading to number 10. Yep, still on page 133. Josh has four dogs. That is the kind of friend that I like to have in my life because I am a crazy dog lover. I have two dogs sitting right next to me, sleeping with me as I do this. It's lovely. All right, so Josh has four dogs. Each dog gets two biscuits every day. How many biscuits will Josh need for all of his dogs for Saturday and Sunday? All right, so Josh, it sounds like a kind of a cool guy over here. He's got four dogs. I think I'm going to make circles for the dogs. Whoa. One, that's one dog, two dogs, and then four dogs. Okay, now each dog gets two biscuits a day. So maybe we'll do two, 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 two. Okay, so this would just be one day of the week, right? So Josh gives two biscuits to each dog every day and the question is really how many will Josh need for Saturday and Sunday so maybe you're thinking about uh four groups of two so four dogs each dog gets two bones equals eight that's true but that would be like for one day we need to know about Saturday and Sunday so four groups of two, we, we're going to do that, of course, but then it gets doubled because it's Saturday and Sunday, so we have to do it two times. So four groups of two is eight times two is 16, and then let's see, so that would be like, this would be like Saturday, let's see, make this a little smaller. And this would be like Sunday. So you can actually see four groups of two. And then we doubled it. Do you see how we doubled it there? That's this action right here. So he gets 16. He needs 16 dog biscuits for Saturday and Sunday. What a good guy Josh is. All right. We're on to number 15. So we have actually skipped um, page 134. I'm pretty confident that you're able to do those without my help. So we're going on to number 15. We're on page 135. It says, Landon collects trading cards. Okay, that's easy to imagine. Part A. Yesterday, Landon sorted his trading cards into four groups. Okay, so we've got four groups. Each group has seven cards. Okay. Draw a bar model to show Landon's cards. 
and I'm going to go ahead and assume that says, how many cards does he have? Okay. So yesterday, Landon sorted his trading cards into four equal groups. So four groups. All right, so that's important to know. Four groups. Now remember, in my bar model, I'm actually going to use that to represent my groups this time. So I'm going to split this into four groups. I'm going to start first by splitting it in half. And then I split each half and half. That way I know I'm going to get four equal pieces. Each group had seven cards. Perfect. Seven, 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 seven. Draw a bar model. Done to show Landon's cards. How many cards does he have? Okay. So maybe you know how to count by sevens. Or maybe you consider each seven to be like a five and a two. This is how I learned my sevens. I turned everything into a five and a two. And then I just kind of went from there. So let's see. If you're still learning your sevens, which most people are, you might think about it. Look at your hands. Show seven on your hands right now. You're probably showing one whole hand and two more, right? So a seven is made up of five and a two. Now, most of us have our fives done. So five, 10, 15, 20. So that would be four groups of five is 20. Plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two. So five, 10, 15, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. So we know that Landon has 28 playing cards. Now, if we want to try practicing counting by sevens, we can do that too. So ready? Let's do it. Seven, 14, 21, 28. All righty. And this was just a guide. You don't have to do this down here. This is just how I think in my head. So I'm actually going to take this part off just in case that's not how you were thinking in your head. You don't have to have that there. All right, let's check out part B. Part B, Landon buys three more packs of trading cards today. Each pack has eight cards, okay? Um, write a multiplication sentence to show how many cards Landon buys, okay? So then uh, it says, then find out how many cards Landon has now. Show your work. Okay, we've got a lot to do here. So I need to read that again, I think. Let's take a moment. You read it too. Okay. I just noticed that we have a, this is two parts. So we have to write a multiplication sentence to show how many landing uh, cards Landon buys today. And we have to find out how many cards Landon has now. Well, he already had 28, so we can't forget that part. Okay, so he buys three more packs with eight cards in each pack. So three groups of eight equals, do you know this one? 54. Now, I'm going to start a new section over here. We have to figure out how many cards Landon has now. So he already had 28 cards, and now he has added 24 cards to the collection. And 20 plus 20 is 40, 8 plus 4 is 12, and 40 plus 12 is 52. Okay, so he has 52 cards. All right, let's check out what's coming next. Number 17, we're still on page 135. Carlos spent five minutes working on each of his eight math problems. Okay, so five minutes per problem, and he had eight problems. He can use eight times five to find the total amount of time he spent on the problems. Okay, for numbers 17a through 17d, choose yes or no to show which are equal to eight times five. Okay, so we already know he can represent what he did with 8 times 5. And we have to see if 17a through 17d are the same as 8 times 5. All right, so let's check them out. Here's 17a. Is 8 plus 5 the same as 8 times 5? Well, the answer to that is negative. No. 
We know that's not the same. Okay, so 17B. Let's see how many groups of five they've given us here. One, two, three, four, five. This is five groups of five, which is the same as 25, and that is not the same as eight times five. So that's a no. All right, 17C. They've given us groups of eight now, and let's check out how many groups of eight we have. One, two, three, four, five. So this is five groups of eight, and we know eight times five is actually equal to five times eight because of the commutative property of multiplication. So to the answer to this one is yes, it is the same, it can be used. Okay, last one on this question. They've given us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight groups of five, and that is exactly how you would read this, eight groups of five, eight times five. So that would be a yes. All right, so we've got no, no, yes, yes. I love when they give us patterns. All right, kids. So that was the end of your review. I know you're going to crush this assessment, and I will see you next time for Chapter 4. Talk to you later. Bye.